All right. Give everybody a chance to get on here.
the most critically acclaimed new series of the year. I need to understand what is going on. All right. Well, amen. That's some good hymns and uh, got a lot for you here today. We've got 44 people on here. Hope you can hear me OK. Um, that we're coming in loud and clear here. Lord willing. Now live on your channel. Wow. 
YouTube sent me a thing saying I was live. Well, I already knew that. But anyway, um, praise the Lord, we're here. And uh, amen, thank God. It's good to be somewhere anyway. Better than being nowhere. But uh, I don't know what the deal is with my picture over here, but um, I think I've got everything going here. So you all can see okay, I'm guessing. And, and uh I'm guessing that everything's coming in clear and you can hear me loud and clear and everything. I don't see any anybody telling me they can't hear me yet, but I know there's a delay here, so we'll wait a few minutes and see what happens with that. And um, amen. So let's see. We got a bunch of people on here, 45 people on here so far, which is good. And um, from Croatia. All right, let's see. Carl from Croatia. Not to be confused with the Croatian sensation. That's not Carl. All right. Authorize Mike. Ruth of Moab. Good, good picture, good sound. A recommendation for a good Spanish pastor. Uh, do you mean to go to that church or to listen to him? What, what what are you asking for, I guess? You'd have to kind of be a little more specific than that. Um, I think there's a, a few of them out there. Where do you live exactly? If you tell me, If you tell me where you live, then I can kind of tell you. Let me know where you live here, and, I, and I, I, there's a few Spanish pastors that I know. One is a, one is, um, oh, I think his last name is Montoya, but I'm I'm trying to think of it right this second, but I can't. I don't know him real well, but I I think he, as far as I understand, he preaches repentance and faith, and and uh, oh, you're in Florida, um. Well, I know, and, and I, I, I can't verify everything with that church or anything, but I know Mickey Carter uh, is in Florida, and I know they have, a Span they have Spanish pastors there, uh, so you could check there um, for a Spanish church. Uh, check Mickey Carter. Um, oh, I think it's called Liberty Baptist Press. It's where we get our homeschool material from. But my wife might be able to put a link on there. Uh, of the church. I can't remember what it's called right offhand, but Mickey Carter's the pastor, and I know they have Spanish churches there. So I'm sure he could probably help you uh, find one. I don't know where at in Florida you're at, uh, but um, may maybe he can help you find one there. Uh, you know, we'll see about that. Okay. Uh, that's the best I could tell you in Florida that uh, that he'd probably be able to help you with that uh better than i could i i don't know very many very many uh spanish pastors or anything like that uh personally um right amen all right amy even way down here down in hot tennessee where do you live at in tennessee there amy i'm curious where you're at there in tennessee we get through tennessee uh, my wife and I, last time, let's see, when's the last time I was in Tennessee? Boy, it's been a while. Um, but I was in Tennessee, I want to say, I guess it's been a few years, but I, I was down there a few times. For sure. Did you see my message earlier, Pastor? What message was that? I've been praying the Lord will see fit to bring a good, God-fearing, God-loving husband to my life, and I'm asking if you'd pray for me about that, okay? Where, where do you live? Lady Techno, where do you live? Crossville on the Cumberland Plateau. Yeah. I seem to have had a lot of spooky rides in my life. Uh, let's see, Cumberland. 
That's funny. That reminds me of something I used to tease my wife about. Um, anyway. Let's see. Crossville on the Cumberland. Ruth of Moab is near Fort Myers. I live in Upper Michigan. Where at in Upper Michigan? In the in the UP? Upper Michigan. Not married either. Ruth of Moab. Well, we got a lot of Christian ladies that aren't married. Looking for husbands. Looking for God-fearing men. Well, I hope you're God-fearing women and you stay holy and separated and keep your lives pure for the Lord and wait on God. You know, you're, the best thing is to... Uh, the best thing is to try to get into a good good Bible preaching church somewhere. And if you do that, God will bless you and you'll be fine. You'll be safe uh, if you can find one. Between not Nashville and Knoxville. Well, I've been there before. I've been to Nashville and Knoxville. Well, I don't know about Knoxville. I know I've been to Nash uh, in the Nashville area. I like Tennessee. In fact, my friend Marty Tate that pastors in Tennessee lives. Well, he lives. Where's he live at? He lives in Dunlop, Tennessee. Dunlop, Tennessee. Pastor Marty Tate. Dunlop, Tennessee. That's where he lives. He owns the Dunlop Restaurant. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Dunlop Restaurant. Andrew says he's looking for a good God-fearing wife. He lives over in... L.A. Well, boy, howdy, L.A. Yeah, that'd be tough to find godly women there, that's for sure. But there's some in there. They're there. Newcomerstown, Ohio, south of Canton, Dover, and New Philadelphia. Hey, I might get over there when I do. I I'm logistically challenged, but I'm planning my trip to D.C. I wonder if I'll be coming right by you. I've been to the Smoky Mountains, Amy. Uh, my wife and I and our family went to the Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I love it there. What a great place. And if my head wasn't in such a fog at the time I went there and I wasn't half crazy, it would probably been an even better place. <laughs> That's a long story. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's funny. Um Let's see here. Have you ever been to Europe, asked Janine. No, I've not been to Europe. But I want to go to Europe. I'll go to Europe someday. But I enjoyed the Smoky Mountain Knife Works. My wife said, you got to come here. So she was kind of dragging me along. It was really. No, I, you know, I'm actually, I, I don't know if I'm going to be preaching in any churches or doing anything on the road. I'll preach in somebody's house if somebody's nearby. I'll hold a church service in their house. I don't mind. But, um, uh, yes, the smoke was definitely in my head at that time, it seemed like. Not real smoke, but anyway. Uh, let's see, Virginia. Well, I like Virginia, too. I love Virginia. I love the Virginia Theological Seminary. Been there a few times, and what a great place that is. You should come and visit, Pastor. Come and visit where? You mean Croatia? Are you kidding me? Leave the country, or you mean go to Europe, and you can meet me over in Europe somewhere? I'm afraid they won't let me back in America if I get out of there. They'll probably kidnap me and keep me in Europe somewhere. Pope will probably put me in some stinking dungeon somewhere and hold me there. Well, it's Andrea. I know where she's from. She's from Iowa. Amen for Iowa. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. The home of the pork tenderloin. Nobody makes pork tenderloins like Iowa. And I mean nobody. Or Iowa Chops. Oh, 
All right, amen. Yeah, well, what do you travel so much for, man? What's going on with that? Anyway, uh, who knows? Who knows what the Lord will do with all that? From Westmont, Illinois. You might never get out of Croatia. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. All right. Virginia. I like Virginia. Yep. Croatia is a popular vacation spot nowadays. Well, Ruth, you're definitely welcome to come visit if you if you uh, make it here and, and you end up being a, a traveling nurse. You definitely got to come. That's for sure. Yeah, tell me about it, Jason. Tell me about it. Well, you saw my video with that Catholic, with the Archbishop, outside of uh, outside of the Basilica. That guy was appointed by the Pope to clean up the mess and cover up that they had there. Very interesting situation, to say the least. Well, I suppose we. I I've been chit chatting enough here. I suppose I better get going and I better keep moving. Uh, Jacob Yates is hungry now. What what made you hungry, Jacob? I didn't even talk about food. Jacob, you're always hungry. Regina is it? Regina Johnson is in North Carolina. Hey, I like North Carolina too. Love that place. Love it in North Carolina. Visited there. South Carolina, North Carolina. Love it over there. What a blessing. What a beautiful place to live. Yep. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Absolutely beautiful. So is South Carolina. I love it all over there. Great place. Great food. Hey, Andrea. The Iowa Tenderloin is no joke. You know that as well as I do. The Iowa Tenderloin. Nobody makes tenderloins like Iowa. Nobody. You can't get those in Minnesota anywhere. They don't know nothing about no tenderloins up here, man. Not a thing. Not a thing about tenderloins up here. I don't mean to make anybody upset here, but they do not know a thing about tenderloins here. Anyway. Well, we better get we got about 70 people on here, about 30 likes. If you guys want to get that up there, share it on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Right? Jennifer Marsoni, South Florida here. Pray for me. Well, Jennifer, we will pray for you. Lord bless you and help you as you serve him and live for him there. In Southern South Florida. Yeah, I haven't seen Andrea on here. I thought maybe she might have ditched us. I haven't seen her for a while. She was probably on here. I just hadn't seen it. But All right. Yeah, that poor movie stuff said be found in Christ. <laughs> Come preach in Arizona. You can stay at my house. You mean you want me to come and preach in Stephen Anderson country? In Arizona? I've got a friend that lives in Utah, Cindy Nelson. Cindy and Troy Nelson, they're friends of ours. Been listening to us for a long time. I like Cindy and Troy. I want to see them sometime. I want to meet them. Yep. Anyway, well, praise the Lord. Samuel Hall. Where where do you live at in Arizona, Samuel? Where are you at over there? This is like ge geography day. I'm just like, where's everybody at? <laughs> well, 
Well, now, there might be some saved people in Stephen Anderson's church. But um, 45 miles south of Phoenix. You can get, uh, like Pastor Hoggard said, you can be awful messed up sometimes about some things. And uh, he was for a long time, Pastor Hoggard was, and the Lord brought him out of it. Right? So we thank the Lord for that. God's merciful to us. God teaches us mercy, too. He teaches us we're not as much as we think we are. We're not as great as we think we are either. Amen. Well, we're going to get into this thing with with uh, Benny Hinn here um, and talk about him. I, you know, it's interesting to me that we've come down to this point where, where we're moving forward here as we as we progress forward here with Mr. Hinn now. Boy, what a nut job this guy is. But I'll have to kind of, you know who he is for the most part, but I'll have to introduce him to you a little bit here before I... Before I read on about him, um, you know, oh, sure, no doubt Steven Anderson is deceived. I, I don't doubt that at all. Okay. Well, let's start with this video. Let's start with this video here, okay? So... This is going to deal with his anointing. Now, on to the topic of the day here, guys. Let's switch gears here. And I want you to listen to this. One of the strangest experiences I had a few years ago visiting Amy's tomb in California. This Thursday, I'm on TBN. Friday, I'm going to go and visit Catherine Kuhlman's tomb. It's close by Amy's in Forest Lawn Cemetery. I've been there once already, and every so often I like to go and pay my respects because this great woman of God has touched my life. And the grave uh, where she's buried is closed. They built walls around it. You can't get in without a key, and I'm one of the very few people who can get in. But I'll never forget when I saw Amy's tomb. It's a incredibly dramatic. She was such a lady that her tomb has seven-foot angels bowing on each side of the, the, her tomb with a gold chain around it. As, as incredible as it is that someone would die with angels bowing on each side of her grave, I felt a terrific anointing when I was there. I actually, I, I Hear this, I trembled when I visited Amy's tomb. I was shaking all over, God's park came all over me. The man with me and I were shaking. Norm, who worked with, with Miss Cohen for years, took me there. And Norm and I were trembling under the power of God. I said, dear God, I said, I feel the anointing. I began to weep. Okay. So, congratulations, my dear we've watched friends. this video before. Congratulations, my dear friends. Ha ha, Count Dracula is here for you today. I want to suck your spiritual blood. Um, that's him. <laughs> I know, I'm just a jerk, right? <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. The guy's a devil and a half. All right, well, let me see if I can get this over to you. Do, 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 do. Here we go. All right. Let's see if we can blow this up. I don't know if you can see this very well. Hmm. I forgot how to blow stuff up on a on a on a um, Windows computer. Anyway, here's you see these two angels bowing down to her tomb. Do you see that? Right. That's what that is. That's what he's talking about. And it was so amazing, he said. Because he said he saw, he saw Count Chocula here. He saw these two angels. And he's acting like these angels are real. Like these are real angels bowing down to his tomb. Right? So he's acting like that's the case. Like, oh, well, 
Do you see these angels bowing down at her tomb? You know, tell me that's not amazing, you know. And he said he felt the anointing. He said he felt the anointing and the power of God from the tomb. From just from just being in the tomb, you know, he, he felt it. Right? Hmm. Well, that's kind of weird. All right. Let me read my book backwards. That'll work. There we go. Benny Hinn is hugely influential Pentecostal healing evangelist. Thousands attend the church he pastored in Orlando, Florida, before he moved his headquarters to Dallas, Texas, and multiplied thousands have attended his crusades throughout the world and watched his television programs. His books are distributed by the millions. Good Morning Holy Spirit was the best-selling Christian book in 1991. So let's look at that here. Uh, Good Morning Holy Spirit, right? Let's look at that one. Okay. This is the book. Here it is right here. Benny's best-selling book, right? Over 1 million copies sold. So one over 1 million people. Over 1 million people. Bought that book. Think about that for a second. Over a million people bought that book. And it's a bunch of garbage is all it is. Signed by Pastor Benny. Oh, man, that makes it even better. Because when he wears those purple gay outfits, that's just awesome. Wait, I I haven't even got into it yet. Wait till I show you. Wait till I show you some of this stuff. It's just it, it's it's unreal. Anyway. All right, here's what he says. Hin is taught that Adam could fly like a bird and swim underwater like a fish. Let me tell you something. Adam could fly. And he could swim. Yes, he had gills. I tell you, it's true. Just ask me. <laughs> oh, it's too much. All right, no, seriously. So who's the guy that sat in the room with him? Who are, who are the people? Listen, who are the people that sat in a room with Benny Hinn and was like, well, yeah, he could fly and he had gills too. He could swim. He was, it was just great. Every, everybody knew it was true. Because Benny said it. Come on. Don't you know if you're a Pentecostal, all you have to do is just say something. It doesn't even have to be true. Right? It doesn't even have to be true. Just say it, and it just makes it all right. Put that money right there. Put it in my hand. (sighs) So Hinn is taught that Adam could fly like a bird and swim underwater like a fish. He says that his anointing comes from visits, which we just saw from the graves of Catherine Kuhlman and Amy Semple McPherson. In April 7th, 1991, Sermon Hinn he revealed that he periodically visits Kuhlman's uh, grave and that he is one of the very few with a key to gain access to it. He also visits Amy's grave where, where he says, I felt the terrific anointing. I was shaking all over. Trembling under the power of God. Dear God, I said, I feel the anointing. I believe the anointing has lingered over Amy's body. Now, why would the anointing linger over Amy's body? 
just kind of hanging around there. That anoint, that anointing just kind of anoint. It kind of just hangs there. It's kind of like, I think that anointing kind of works like anoint. It's like a anoint gun. Well, I'm gonna show you the anoint gun. He's got one of those anoint guns. I'm gonna show you. It's the anoint gun. Okay, he's got one of those. Now Sarah R brings up a very good point here. Talking to the dead is demonic. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's called necromancy. <laughs> it's actually extremely demonic. I'm not laughing about that. I'm just saying it is, and everybody's like, it's cool. I remember Jack Scop doing the same thing. Before he got caught in his fornication, I remember him, he, he, in a video he was like, he, he, he sat there in his office, he's like, sometimes I come back to my office and I go, Jack, he's talking about Jack Hiles. Jack, we did it again, Jack. The aisles were full. The baptistry was full. The nursery was full. The buses were full. We did it again, Jack. I'm like, who's we? Do you have a turd in your pocket? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? We? You're talking to Hiles. He's dead. And then Russell Anderson... He that Baptist necromancy. Russell, Russell Anderson does the same thing. He okay. So when Jack Scott before Jack Scott fell and he was writing all this weird stuff. Well, before he fell physically, anyway, he was writing all this weird stuff. Then Russell Anderson was like, Russell Anderson was like, he's like, I have to write a letter to Doctor Hiles to tell him why I'm leaving First Baptist of Hammond. Right? So he's like, he writes a letter to Hiles and Hiles is dead. Right? Well, that's nuts. <laughs> My pockets were full. Right? Hinn even exclaimed that he met Catherine Kuhlman in a vision of heaven. So he said that he said that he met he said that he met um, he met Kuhlman in a vision that he had. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice. All right. All right, you ready? I'm going to give you some advice. If you have a vision and dead people are in it, don't believe it. And quite frankly, quit having a conversation with dead people. It's weird. It's demonic. It's wicked. And it's not even them. It's devils coming to impersonate them. You're not supposed to communicate with the dead. It's forbidden. That was easy. Well, I was just sitting there kind of hanging out, and all of a sudden, Catherine Kuhlman appeared to me. Well, get out of there. It's a familiar spirit. Just, just run. Get Pray. But they don't they're not gonna appear to godly people. They're not gonna stick around. They're gonna appear to people that want that demonic activity and that power in their life that crave power. Hinn claims to have intimate conversations with the Lord almost on a daily basis. He allegedly had his first vision of Jesus at age eleven. And has said an eight-hour private conversation with the Holy Ghost. Has had an eight-hour private conversation with the Holy Spirit. In his book, Rise and Be Healed, he said this. So he said he sat there and he had an eight-hour conversation with the Holy Ghost. Now here's the thing, okay? 
you can't. You and I have to, as as Christians, we have to believe God's word over our minds and our feelings. Because our minds and our feelings, and Satan will use that. This is just an example, though, okay? My example is this. Uh, to use that is, is that if we're not careful, we'll start trusting in our feelings and our thoughts and everything else more than we do God's word. Right? And I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight when I preach on signs and wonders from the Bible. Yeah, Benny was talking to the devil. Right? All right. So Hin says he had an eight hour conversation with the Holy Spirit. Thinking that's not going to happen because the Holy Spirit doesn't doesn't talk audibly to people any longer. He speaks through his word. In these last days have spoken unto us by his son. Right? Now the Bible does say to Paul, who was writing the scriptures, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Right? Those are things that will happen. Kristen asked the question, Kristen Hadley asked the question, are you going to put the Signs and Wonders Sermon up on YouTube? Yes. It will probably be up tonight after the service. It'll definitely be on Sermon Audio, uh, but it'll be on tonight. Lord willing, it'll be on YouTube uh, after we're finished. So something like that. Uh, Are your sermons when you hold church? Yes. I don't put my sermons online. What about Samuel? What about Saul contacting Samuel's ghost? Asked Joseph as Robin. Well, that's a good question to ask. And here's the point He thought he was conjuring up Samuel, but he was conjuring up a familiar. And that's really what the Bible shows when you study it and you look at it. I just want to know how that guy gets on here. How does he keep making up accounts anyway? That is the strangest thing in all the world. He just keeps making them up. Right? Yeah. You know, it's easy to to desire experiences and desire feelings and emotions and everything else, even for Baptists. You know, and sometimes we just got to trust God. Lady Techno asks, can you live stream your sermons? No, I don't do that. I quit doing that a while back. I don't believe it's a good idea to do that. It just, I I believe that the church ought to be private, and, um, you know, it, it allows me to be able to just put them on later. So that's... That's, that's the way it goes. Okay, so Hin tosses the anointing of the Holy Spirit like a baseball and slays people in the spirit. Well, let's look at that. Uh, not that one. Here it is. You ready? This is this is what David Cloud is talking about. Now this is this is strong spiritual warfare. Understand this? I don't either. I don't either. But when the Lord talks to me, I obey Him. It's just that simple. There's nothing more to it. Fire, God. Are you ready, guys? Fire! Take it! Take it! Take the anointing! 
See? That is the Noyton gun. That's the Noyton whip right there. That, Benny Hinn is the official Noitner. Okay? He is the Noitner. That sounded like indigestion. Take the fresh breath of the spirit. Do you see how demonic? Take the fresh breath of the spirit. Sounds like, it, it literally sounds like he's imparting devils to them. Okay, so here's a guy that he's saying had cancer, and now that person's in this, like, like okay, you can get a Pentecostal worked up or a, or a um, you know, basically a Pentecostal charismatic. You can get them worked up, and you can get yourself into a state of euphoria that you don't feel any pain at a current time because you get your mind to believe it just like your mind can fool you into thinking something's wrong and there's nothing wrong. What do I mean by that? You can get anxiety. You can have anxiety and fear over something that's not even real. And it can be worked up in your mind. Okay. And I know this because it's happened to me. That it could be work up in your mind, and when you get through it, you're like, there's no reason to fear this at all. It isn't real. But I've feared it anyway. And then once you go through it, you realize that it's not real. So your mind can trick you. It isn't even, and the devil will use that, but it does that to all, and the devil does it in afflict the saints when he finds out they have some anxiety or depression or darkness or discouragement or anything else he can he can go after that and he can attack that and make it worse with his fiery darts and he can make it darker and more scary and worse just like he can do this okay just like he can do this and these people can get this state of, oh, I don't feel any pain. I'm fine. I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with me. My cancer is healed. They can work their minds up to that. Whereas later, later, they, when they come down off of that, they feel really bad. They still feel the pain. It's not over. I'm telling you, that's true. You can get yourself so hyped up. Either way, with anxiety to fear something that's not real, I know that from experience, and with something like this. Yes! We break it in the name of the Lord. Yeah, and what's up with the, like, WWE entrance like you're some kind of, like you're some kind of wrestler? I mean, he's literally acting like he's, like he's on, the, like he's entering into the ring. Right? Right? I just think he just likes pushing people. He just likes pushing people, like like pushing them. Oh. 
Did you see that? He shot them with the Noyton gun right on the sides. Like, he didn't hit her. He went, boom, and he hit those two. And he hit them with the Noyton gun. Ba-bam, Noyton. Right? That was the Noytoner right there. He hit him with the Noint gun. Now, you will have to notice the notice the winding up of the Neutner. Okay? That's like that's like the sling. Okay? Um he was winding up the Neutner. Sometimes it takes a special wind up to to what I I liken it to the Hulk Hogan. Okay? Let me, let me get that in the camera. Okay? You get you got to you have to have the wind up there sometimes, right? You get you got you got to the wind up there sometimes. Okay. She was in the choir. Huh? She oh. was in the choir. Her glasses fell off. She could see. She's in the choir, her glasses fell off, and now her eyes, what is the Cancer, pastor! Cancer! Cancer! My goodness, do they ever have a show going here, okay? Her glasses fell off and she could see. Now you'll notice the wind up of the Neutner again. I want you to keep keep track of that. What's going on there? Cancer, cancer! All the pain is gone. I mean, he's throwing that Neutner around like nobody's business right now, man. That that Neutner's moving, man. Here he goes. There, there, see that? He's just throwing it out there now. Now he's just throwing it. He's just like, hey, he's flinging it. He's flinging the Neutner. Neutner, Neutner, Neutner. He's just like, he's, he's flinging it. He's got it. Oh, there you go. There's Paul Crouch. He didn't fall. Paul Crouch is like, I ain't falling. I got a bigger Neutner than that guy's Neutner. My Neutner's bigger than that guy's Neutner. Whoa. Whoa, did you see him? He got take, he got Neutin right off his feet. That Neutner just kicked in and boom, it just went. Man, what's
what's in that coat anyway? Either that's got some stinky armpit body odor in it, or that's the Neutner. Man, them girls don't look like nothing's wrong with them. He put a little bit of spin on that one that time. Did you see? He just was kind of like, he put a little bit of action on that one. Did you see that? It was like a little bit of, you know what I mean? Of course the music's repetitive. It's a mantra. The music is designed to put them all in a, in a, in a, in a, in Oh, you're anointing it. Oh, oh, look at that. Now he's like, oh, yeah? Oh, you ain't going to fall for the anointer? Nobody stands up to the anointer. Nobody. This is his finishing move. Do you see the claw? You see that claw? Oh, nobody. And I mean nobody can stand up to the anointer. Nobody. So now, oh, no. Now you're getting you're getting the real Neutner. Right? It's coming. You see the claw out there? Oh no. You didn't fall? Here you go. All right, here you go. It's coming. You you don't you don't do that. Nobody. Look, it's like the greatest it look. This this Neutner is like the crane kick in Karate Kid. If do right, no can defend. Are you ready? Here comes the second dose, dose, excuse me, the second dose of the Neutner. Oh, that's right. Who do you think you are? Oh, you're, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you didn't go down the first time? All right, I took you down the second time. Now you're going to get it again. Oh, I, I didn't even touch you that time. Didn't even touch you that time. Right? There, yep, that's the backhand. Right? It's number four, right? The backhand. You 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 ain't getting away with that. How dare you not go down for the Neutner? Nobody nobody stands for the Neutner. How could anybody believe that this guy is real? How could any, any, anybody believe this guy is real? What's going on there? She had a stomach condition all healed tonight and her husband had problems with his feet. All pain gone. <laughs> In a stomach condition. Well, probably had bad gas. Take some stinking Beano. What is that supposed to mean? For the Lord God Almighty. Lift your hands to heaven, saints. Come on.
This is just typical CCM garbage. Now, I want you to think about this because once as we continue on with this, with this series on CCM, uh, or I mean on 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 the the uh, charismatic movement, it's going to dovetail into the to the to the CCM charismatic movement. And one of the ways um, that these people channel devils and do all those kind of things, one of the ways that they do that is is through the music that they use. Okay. Now let me say this to you, because people are kind of commenting on the side here and wondering about this. Okay. Some of this is fake, but that's what Satan does. Well, some of this is fake. Some, All of this is a mere distraction from the gospel. All of it is a mere distraction from the truth. Okay? All right? So you, so you, have, to, you have to understand. You have to understand the difference, okay? It's a distraction. And then three, some of it is, it's all demonic, but some of it does have a, a spiritual, the spirit that I work in the children of disobedience empowering some of these things. For instance, like the last guy that we talked about had people levitating at his meeting. Do I believe that's true? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So you have to understand there's more going on here than just that, okay? It's not just all fake. It is all fake in the sense that they are they transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness, okay? That's what they do. Okay, so understand that. Look at him like ordering people around. Join hands quickly. As I said, quick. Take that on it. Marakate Pialba Kanti Mante Remo. Come here, girls. All three of them. Ugh. Ugh. See how he likens that to holiness? See how that worked? How he did that? By the way, I always thought that Lady Techno and Jesus is Awesome was the exact same person because I can't see their face, but I always think that was the same person. But now I'm seeing here again that it's that you're not. Okay, anyway. Worthy, worthy. Join hands right here, quick. That don't sound like no fresh breath of the spirit. That sounds like some stank hoe breath is what that sounds like. I don't want none of that. 
That's that Jezebel spirit. You may not understand this. I don't either. I don't either. But when the Lord talks to me, I obey Him. It's just that simple. There's nothing more to it. Lift your hands and drink it in. Ugh. Lift your hands and drink it in. Drink the blood. Lick your heart. Drink it. Drink all of it. Drink it in you. No thanks, Count Chocula. I think I'll pass on your stinking anointing gun and your drinking. I don't want I don't want what you're serving, man. I do not want what you are serving. I want none of what you got to hand out to me. I don't want none of that. You drink it. I don't want none of it. Okay, so Benny said this. This is what happened at an eyewitness account at Hinn's meeting in 1991. Winded catchers try to keep up with the toppling bodies. He rears back with a pitching motion, slays the entire choir with one toss. Hinn takes off his custom-tailored jacket and rubs it briskly on his body. He is rubbing the power into the jacket. Then he starts swinging it wildly like the biblical David swinging his sling. He decks his followers left and right. Bam, bam, bam. The stage vibrates with their landings. Then he throws it. Another bam as a catcher moves to pick up a woman. Hinn slays him. Then he slays the catcher who caught the catcher. When Benny Hinn has moved, nobody is safe from the power. He blows loudly into the microphone. Hundreds fall backward. Mike Thomas, Florida Magazine, November 24th, 1991. Hmm. That was a mess, as you can see. In one of his many appearances on Trinity Broadcasting Network, here's what we're going to show. I'm going to show you a video of this. Hinn said of those who criticize his ministry, somebody is attacking me because of something I am teaching. Let me tell you something, brother. You watch it. Don't attack this man of God. There's a group here in California that thinks they are in judge the judgment seat of Christ. Dear God in heaven, I wish I could just, sometimes I wish I could, I would give me a Holy Ghost machine gun. I'll blow your head off. That's what he said. Here it is. People of God, quit attacking men of God by name. Somebody's attacking me because of something I'm teaching. Let me tell you something, brother. You watch it. You're God in heaven. I wish I can just... Oof. They call out the medicine in my foot. You know, I've looked for one verse in the Bible. I just can't seem to find it. One verse that said, if you don't like him, kill him. I really wish I could find it. <laughs> but don't mention people's names on your radio program and your TV program, thinking you're doing God's service. You're not. You stink, frankly. That's the way I think about it. <laughs> you stink. <laughs> he said, you stink. <laughs> That's what I think about it. <laughs> I think he thinks I stink. He's not going to be happy with this, is he? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, by the way, he's talking about John MacArthur because John MacArthur on his on his radio broadcast had mentioned um, had had mentioned um, Benny Hinn's garbage on there. Sometimes I wish God would give me a Holy Ghost machine gun. I'll blow your head. Whoa. 
He said, sometimes I wish God would give me a Holy Ghost machine gun to blow your head off. So he wanted a Holy Ghost machine gun. So, uh, so uh, he could blow people's heads off. Right? All right. Early in his ministry, Hinn taught by revelation knowledge that the believer is a little God on earth. Right? So he believed that he was a little God on earth, that he, Hinn, is Jesus, and that there are actually nine members of the Trinity. Now, I don't know if anybody ever explained to him what a trinity is, but nine is not in that number, right? Nine is not in that number. So Hinn said he was Jesus. He said there's actually nine members of the Trinity since God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost each has a body, soul, and spirit. But in 1991, he repudiated these amazing revelations. So he basically said, ah, must have had some bad gas. That wasn't the anointing speaking to me. That was something else. Right? That wasn't God speaking to him. You know, that's why we don't believe the voices in our heads. Satan has access to our brain. He can use our mind against us, and he likes to. He likes to use our mind against us. He sincerely does. And and we have to we have to battle with with uh, against that, and we have to use the word of God to defend ourselves against even our own minds sometimes because they work against us. So we've got to trust the Lord, and we got to trust what God's word says. All right. Hinn claimed that in the 1990s, he received a new mandate from heaven, which was to bring the message of miraculous healing power of God to America. Now, remember, he got his anointing from sucking the grave, from soaking in the grave of Amy Semple McPherson. Okay, are you ready? Now, remember this. Okay, who remembers this? Now it's time for you to play along over here on the side. Okay, so... Over here on the comment section, I'm going to get you involved with this, all right? What did we talk about on Friday? On Friday, we talked about spiritual fornication leads to can lead to physical fornication. Right? That's the spirit. That's the spirit that leads to that, right? Okay, now Amy Simple McPherson and Catherine Kuhlman both, right? Both were fornicators. And what do we know about Benny Hinn? We know that Benny Hinn fornicated, which we're going to get to, by the way, at the end of this broadcast. Benny Hinn fornicated with Paula White. Why? That's the spirit of Babylon. That's the whore spirit. Right? That's the whore spirit. The Bible says they're filthy. That's the whore spirit. Okay, so he 
He said, God is not going to heal you now. He healed you 2,000 years ago. All you have to do today is receive your healing by faith. Right? He said, we must never say, if it be thy will, Lord, and claims that 1,000 people are healed at each of his miracle services. Yet a reporter was unable to verify any healings. Right? Right? When, pers when pressed for truly convincing miracles, Hinn's spokesperson, Susan Smith, cited a woman in Orlando who was cured of blindness caused by diabetes. But she would not give the woman's name. She later admitted that the woman's vision may still be cloudy. She still has diabetes, strangely, and was just rehospitalized. Florida Magazine, November 24th, 1991. Right? Benny Hid's ministry sent Hank Hanegraaff three prime examples of the supposed thousands of healings that have occurred through his ministry, including the case of the healing of colon cancer. But when Dr. Preston Simpson investigated, he found that the colon tumor had been surgically removed rather than miraculously healed, and that the other two cases were also bogus. Hank Hanegraaff, What's Wrong with the Faith Movement, Part 1. Following Benny Hinn's November 1993 crusade in Basel, Switzerland, the co-organizer apologized because no miracles occurred and because Hinn had promise, made promises that were not kept. He said no miracle happened with Hinn. Instead, the healings turned out to be falsified. They did not honor God. They were the work of man. One case had to do with a man ill with cancer. Hinn prophesied over him that he would have many years of health ahead. This man died two days later. Alexander Siebel, who is Benny Hinn? www.alexandersiebel. Who is Benny Hinn? On Sunday, April 30th, 2000, four people died in Nairobi, Kenya during a Benny Hinn miracle crusade. Reuters News Service, four die waiting for miracle cures May 4th, 2000, quoting the Kenya Times. They have been released from a hospital to be cured at Hinn's meetings, but they died instead. I don't read in the Bible where anybody died when they tried to reach out to Jesus Christ for healing. And if they did die, Jesus rose, made him raise from the dead, right? Lazarus, come forth, right? Let's see here. Anthony Thomas, who produced a television documentary titled The Question of Miracles, focusing on Benny Hinn and Rena Re Reinhard Bonnke, testified, I was quite willing to be persuaded that there really were miracles, and it was an important journey of discovery for me. He examined a Hinn crusade in Portland, Oregon, during which 76 miracles were claimed. Thomas followed five of the cases for a year and concluded that there were no medical evidences of healing. He concluded, in my experience, there was nothing that we saw that in any way could qualify as a miracle. Document, documentary Questions, Healing mi Miracles. Christian News, April 30th, 2001, page 19. The team was unable to verify 78 miracles claimed during a Reinhard Bonnke crusade in ben Benin City, Nigeria. NBC Television Dateline program asked Hinn's ministry to provide confirmation of the 56 cases of healing that were claimed at one of his crusades. Hinn's people could only come up with five cases of what they called irrefutable and medically proven miracles. But when Dateline researched these cases, they found that only one of the people could provide medical records, and her doctor suspected that the woman never had the Lou Gehrig's disease she claimed to have been healed of. Charisma Online, February 20th, 2003. Let's see. We're going to watch this one first in a second here. 
Though Hinn claims to talk with God as naturally as one would talk with a husband or wife, he has made many false prophecies. On December 31st, 1989, at the Orlando Christian Center, Hinn said this, The Lord also tells me to tell you, in mid-90s, about 94 or 95, no later than that, God will destroy the homosexual community of America. He will destroy it with fire. Well, that hasn't happened. Right? During the same service, Hinn said, The Spirit of God tells me an earthquake will hit the east coast of America and destroy much in the 90s. Not one place will be safe from earthquakes in the 90s. On Trinity Broadcasting Network's Praise the Lord program May 2, 2000, Hinn prophesied that Jesus would soon begin appearing to Muslims and in Christian meetings and that many would see him. On that same program, Ruth Heflin prophesied that Jesus would soon appear on the platform with Benny Hinn. Okay, now we're going to get into this video here. The charismatic movement is an arm of Rome, and this proves it, okay? I don't. I can say it. If they're going to get mad at me, let them be mad at me. I've been, hey, do they travel like I do? No, they don't. I travel. I travel 700 hours every year I'm on a plane. That's a fact. I'm going around the globe in just a few days. I'm literally going around the globe. And I go to these nations. Sometimes I go places nobody even knows I'm there. Because somebody calls me to come pray with them. I was in Morocco just a so you literally fly an airplane, a jet, all around the world, right, to pray with somebody. Benny, I don't know if you know this or not, but we have these. And this is a lot cheaper than a jet. A few days back, because some, some precious lady who was very high up said, come quietly, pray for me. I did. And a young man. How do you come privately on a jet or quietly on a jet? You're jetting off to another country. And my God, I'll never forget that. I landed in Rabat, Morocco, Mark, and I'm sitting in the restaurant so tired. I flew in from South Africa and I, and I stopped to pray for this one woman, just one lady. And I'm sitting in the restaurant at midnight and this precious Muslim guy walked up to me he said you're Benny Hinn I said yes please can I talk to you I said all right he said can we talk private he was afraid for the others to hear him he told me I heard this without with my own ears I was shaken when he told me this he said I'm a Muslim and I watch you on TBN he said, please tell me about Jesus. Wow. Yes, it happened in Morocco only days ago. He said, please, would you send me some material? He said, I need to know about your God. And this happened. Well, couldn't he, couldn't that Muslim guy just call TBN here and have, have Benny's stuff sent? Why did he have to pay for a jet to go all the way over there? at midnight in a hotel in Rabat, Morocco. The power of Christian television. Don't tell me about Christian television. I know it with my being, I know it. I've been there. I've been in places you've never been. Would you believe it if I told you? I was the only preacher. I okay, hang on now. Here's, what's, here's what I want you to pay attention to. Ready? I was the only preacher, and I don't want to boast, but I'm just a fact. <laughs> when, when John Paul died, when the Pope died, I was the only preacher invited the day before the massive service. I was invited to attend the private service 
inside St. Peter's Basilica with all the Catholic Cardinals present. I was the only preacher there with the, with the Vatican staff and Chuck Hall next to me. I took Chuck with me. That's a fact before God. The high altar, if you've ever been to the beautiful St. Peter's Basilica, the high altar, right in front of the high altar is where I was sitting. And the Pope's body was behind us. And those cardinals were walking by me, saying, Benny Hinn, Benny Hinn, Benny Hinn. <laughs> That's a fact. And then we had lunch. Chuck was there. You can ask him. I had, we had lunch with one of the highest officials in, in the Vatican. He said, we all watch you on TBNE. Oh, my God. And then he said this to me. He said, what you have, we, what you do, we need. And Benny. Chuck was right there and heard him say that. There goes all the Catholic money to, uh, to TBN, right? What do you think pumps it up and keeps it going? Oh, yes. I'm going to tell you, precious people. They're watching us inside the Vatican. They're watching us in Muslim countries. They're watching in China like you heard that precious girl. And here you are sitting reading your something. Get to the phone. You want God to bless you? You know what? If you're putting your trust in the world, you saw what happened a few weeks ago. How quickly you can lose it. People are, have lost homes. They're losing their, their, their future financially. Some of them have, are, it's, it's, it's scary out there. But not for God's people. If you believe the Bible, then prove it. Prove it. You believe God? Or do you, do you believe when it's good to believe? God wants to bless you. And show you it's really his hand. If God blesses you when all is well, well, you'll never even recognize it's God's hand. But when he blesses you and your neighbor is starving, when he blesses you and the guy next door is losing his house, then you'll say, oh, that's God all right. And he wants to bless you. So these guys preach a false gospel, and then they, and then they ask for money, right? Um... No, he said the Cardinals were present. All of the Cardinals. He admits, this guy just admitted to you, right there, that he's working for the Pope. He just admitted to you that he was working for them. Right? Just admitted. That he directly went over there. Now this, wait, let me get to this one here first. They just released a study. This will bless Bruno, I think. Bruno. They just released a study. Hey, Bruno, this will bless you. That more people are healed in a Catholic church than Pentecostal churches. No, it's a fact. That's an absolute fact. The studies have proven it because Catholic people revere the Eucharist. More people get healed in a Catholic church during communion than Pentecostals during church attendance or communion because to us it's symbolic. Well, Jesus didn't say, this is symbolic of my body. He said, this is my body. He didn't say, this is symbolic of my Bloody said, this is my blood. And I believe, I always have believed that in the spirit, it is his body. In the spirit, it's his blood. So you revere it. See? What's he teaching there? Transubstantiation. That's Rome's doctrine. There's healing in communion. Absolutely. I've seen it happen in my own. Okay, does, does anybody see in the Bible where God showed that the institution of the Lord's Supper was meant for healing? No. It says if you're not right with God, then you can be sick. Right? That you can be sick. But it doesn't say that it's meant to be a healing exercise 
or uh, an ordinance that, that heals you. On ministry. And there's healing in the Catholic churches because these people are devoted and show up every Sunday. They don't church hop. We hop, they don't. That's why we're sick and many of them are healed. Miraculous, I mean powerful stuff going on in those churches, Catholic churches. People just miracles like you can't believe. Miracles are breaking out today in Coptic churches in Egypt for the same reasons. Coptic churches that don't preach the gospel. Roman Catholic churches that don't preach the gospel. Yet there's miracles breaking out. So doctrine doesn't matter is what they're saying. The word of God doesn't matter. What God's word said doesn't matter. What matters is the signs and the wonders and the miracles and those things. You ought to go on YouTube and look up Father Macari. It'll blow your head off in a good way. You'll see miracles you can't believe in his ministry. I met that amazing man, Macari. Just put the word Macari. MCC or MKK, it'll come out, whatever. There's not a whole lot of Macaris out there. You'll see the miracles. You'll see the people getting free from demons by the thousands. Muslims come into his meetings and he walks with his cross and chants and the Coptic language and sticks his cross on their heads and they get healed. So he takes his cross, his Coptic cross. I don't know what that looks like. Maybe I can see if I can find one of those. That. Right? So he takes that and he sticks it on them. And they're healed. Wow. Amazing. Because they believe... As I believe, you must be faithful to your church. It's all about the church. I think we miss that in our Pentecostal circles. So, See, it is true what he's saying about being faithful to your church. You ought to be faithful to your church, but you ought to be faithful to your church because God's Word says to, not because you're looking for some healing or some extra thing. It's because God's Word says to. It's, there's, there's reasons why we're to be faithful to the, to the house of God, that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much the more as you see the day draw closer. Any among you, sick, in the church, come to the elders, and the guarantee is you will be healed. Not maybe, you will be healed, and additionally, your sins be forgiven. It's all in the Bible. You see, he says, it's all in the Bible. Yeah, but you're perverting what the Bible says. See, these are the days of deception. These are the days of strong deception. And we've got to trust the written word of God over all of our feelings, over all of our emotions, over all of the signs and wonders and everything that's going to be done. It's all going to have to be matched up to the word of God. All going to have to be matched up to God's word. All going to have to be. If it doesn't match up, right? And you got to chuck it out. Well, and here we have this, okay? Because this is what ended up happening. This is where Benny ended up getting caught.
Now, let me stop here and say that Paula should never be a pastor anyway, because there's no such thing as that, uh, as a female pastor. Um, also, let me say this, that Paula White, Paula White is, is Donald Trump's spiritual advisor. Paula White got the anoint and the Benny and the Pope. I, I haven't been much of being able to take vacation or do that, and I decided to just implement some new things. I found out you preach better if you get a little sand in your toes. <laughs> So thank you for allowing me uh, this past week to be refreshed and to be replenished in my body and just to chill and not to have to answer too many emails or phone calls and to enjoy a little bit of downtime and, and do some things just as a person. Amen. A patron of the arts means you support the Vatican so they can maintain all the work of Michelangelo. I'm one of the guys now that supports what they do. And that is a fact. I was there and we were taken around by a man named Wilhelm Kramer. And they asked me, literally they said, do you know people that can help us financially? I said, all right. And here's what I made my mistake. I let her come with me to Rome so she can donate money. That was stupid on my part. And here's what I made my mistake. I let her come with me to Rome so she can donate money. Speaking of our pastor, I want to tell you a little secret. Can you keep a secret? It's really not a secret. So if you tell someone it's a secret, then they'll go tell everyone, right? Is that how it works? <laughs> well, we have encouraged her to take a few days of vacation, and she didn't. That's awesome. That you, Those of you who don't know her, she don't ever take a vacation. So we encouraged her to do that this week, and she's going to come back next Sunday. actually got to go on vacation a little bit and enjoyed five days, and thank you for allowing me to be refreshed. And, um, you know, I believe it or not, I've, just, I've never done that. But I found out if you get a little sand in your toes, you preach better. <laughs> if you do a little shopping. So thank you for allowing me just to have a week of just time and I heard it just went awesome and I love you so much. I'm so happy to be home and thank you guys for allowing me to take a vacation. I, I haven't been much of being able to take vacation or do that and I decided to just implement some new things. I found out you preach better if you get a little sand in your toes. So, so thank you for allowing me uh, this past week to be refreshed and to be replenished in my body and just to chill and not to have to answer too many emails or phone calls and to enjoy a little bit of downtime and, and do some things just as a person. And they asked me, literally they said, do you know people that can help us financially? I said, all right. And here's what I made my mistake. I let her come with me to Rome so she can donate money. That was stupid on my part. Just to well, I don't. If you're going to donate money, what do you have to go there together for? Why don't you just send the money? Right? Chill and not to have to answer too many emails or phone calls and to enjoy a little bit of downtime and, and do some things just as a person. Here's what I made my mistake. I let her come with me to Rome so she can donate money. I, I just feel like I need to share a few things. First off, how many of you have wind of any kind of article that came out on your pastor? On your pastor. It sounds so stupid to hear a woman say that. It sounds absolutely stupid. So just about seven of you? All right. I just wanted to, how many of you have any kind of wind? Come on, anybody heard anything or seen anything? It, 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 it helps me to see. Well, First off, I put something up on the web and we took down. There was an article that came out in the National Enquirer, which we're talking the National Enquirer, that also said Oprah was a prostitute. So I quite honestly would laugh about it. I would laugh because I was kind of honored that, um, that I, they thought I was that valuable to put me in there.
But the, um, the implication was that there was some kind of inappropriate or immoral or wrong thing within a relationship context between myself and Pastor Benny. And I'll tell you very 100% clear, that is absolutely 100% not true. There is nothing that is immoral, inappropriate. There is nothing at all. Here's the bottom line. I have not had an improper, immoral situation. That kind of clears it all up, right? First off, I put something up on the web and we took down. May the 25th to be exact, Paula White, who is a preacher, came to tape on This Is Your Day. It was actually the 24th of May. Tape from some programs like anybody else that come to tape. She's a preacher like anybody else. I've had women on my programs and men. Now we've known each other. Her husband and her attended our church for nine years. When nobody knew Paula White, she was one of my church members. So we got to talk. She went through a painful divorce. I went through a painful divorce. We found common ground to talk about stuff we could help each other in. And a friendship did develop. But hear this. No immorality whatsoever. These people out there are making it sound like we had an affair. That's a lie. That's a total lie. Because the second you say affair, you think sex. Well, there's no truth to that whatsoever. None. The Vatican did invite me a few days ago. They made me a patron of the arts in the Vatican two weeks ago. And that's a fact. A patron of the arts means you support the Vatican so they can maintain all the work of Michelangelo. I'm one of the guys now that supports what they do. And that is a fact. I was there and we were taken around by a man named Wilhelm Kramer. And they asked me, literally they said, do you know people that can help us financially? I said, all right. And here's what I made my mistake. I let her come with me to Rome so she can donate money. Thank you guys for allowing me to take a vacation. I found out you preach better if you get a little sand in your toes. So thank you for allowing me uh, this past week to be refreshed and to be replenished in my body and just to chill and not to have to answer too many emails or phone calls and to enjoy a little bit of downtime and, and do some things just as a person. It must be the end of it. Well, we oh. have encouraged her to take a They'll go tell everyone, right? Is that how it works? Vacation. Don't ever take a vacation. So we encouraged her to do that this Enjoyed five days and thank you for allowing a little sand in your toes. Your okay, I don't, don't want to keep. I don't want to. Vacation. I love. I don't want to keep playing the same thing over and over again for you. Brian and Jillian, good to see you. See Gary and Dee, good to see everybody in the house. And just Monique, love everybody. You know, I um, came back and it's, it's been a year and I've learned something about ministry. As you give out, you not only have to receive back in, always listening to the word and, and going and making sure. But I, I haven't been much of being able to take vacation or do that. And I decided to just implement some new things. I found out you preach better if you get a little for allowing me uh, this past week to be and not to have to answer too many 
and do some things just as a person. Amen. Anyway, so they keep showing the same clip over and over again to make the make uh, the connection there of exactly what they did. So we're going to talk about uh, Paula White coming up in the in the future here, Lord mm-hmm. willing, anyway. That we'll we'll cover Trump's pastor, Paula White, and um, we'll deal with that coming up. But you see that she was a member of Benny Hinn's church for nine years. So that's an interesting little tidbit, isn't it? That's an interesting little little piece of information that uh, makes a lot of sense. You see the connections. Now you see the connections to Rome. You see all those things. So it that's Benny Hinn. Since then, Benny Hinn's marriage was restored. He had a big, uh, let's see. He got restored by the Pentecostals, I guess. And uh, that's his, that's his. Let me tell you something else. The devil has been attacking me. Absolutely. You think the, the, the enemy has taken a vacation? No, no. Let me tell you something. It's been rough. Announcement from Pastor Benny to you, his special partners. His special partners. This is a very painful letter to read. I've sent it to you, I'm, and I know you'll read it, but I want to read it just in case someone doesn't, won't get the chance or is not on our mailing list. I come to you with a broken heart. You may have heard by now that my wife Suzanne, whom I love very much and always will, filed for divorce on February. It was a total Neither did her Lord will a reconciling, and we are in love. I think it's weird that his wife looks kind of like got really skinny and got blonde hair and looked end up looking like like Paula White. It's just kind of weird. I love it. You know, in '79, I fell in love with this girl, and I think I'm do everything. Something you know, all over the world. I have watched him. Suzanne and I are reconciling, and we are in love. I love it. You know, in 79, I fell in love with this girl, and I think I'm more in love with you now than I've ever been. Wow, that's very mutual. Well, and we want to say thank you to our partners for praying, certainly performing a miracle. I mean, for the rest of my life, it's back, Sue. You know, the joy is back. Our permission is going into each and every one of our lives to totally do a work in us. But the minister suffered because the Lord's word go on. Anyway, so. Doesn't Suzanne look beautiful and lovely? Many of you are calling and asking, what's next? What's next? What's next? We're going to tell you what's next. We're getting married. That's what's next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she, because you said now I. So anyway, so so they ended up getting married again, um, which is good for them. I mean, I'm I'm glad they did. Uh, from that standpoint, I, I'm glad that he went back to his wife and he reconciled. Or you know, even if they're not saved, uh, and they're devils, they're, they're devilish people or whatever. I still think it, Christian marriage is right, and being married is right, and getting back with your husband and. You know, those kind of things from that standpoint is right. So, I mean, you know, um, it's probably a good thing that they did uh, from that standpoint. But I think they're both of the same spirit. It's kind of like looking at two lost people and telling them they shouldn't divorce. Well, they shouldn't, you know, if they can maintain, if they can stay married. So um, anyway, but so so the point is, is that... Um, here they have this reconciliation. Remember Benny Hinn's wife. I don't know if you remember this. This is what she... This is what she looked like before. He husband, Pastor Benny Hinn. God, God wanted to let me... I'm... Be God-pleasers. Don't be people-pleasers. Because if you're a people-pleaser... You're a bet kisser. If you're a people pleaser. That was her. Just so you remember. Um, anyway, so <laughs> there you go. So that that's and it just weird to me that she became a blonde with a skinny face and looks like Paula White kinda. I don't know. It just that that was always weird to me. 
But none of my business anyway. What you know, and I'm not picking on him personally in his personal life or whatever. All this is public uh, as far as that goes. So anyway, what you see there is the truth. So from that standpoint, so uh, the truth about his ministry and what he stands for and that Pentecostal false anointing, uh, which is very dangerous. The whole thing is so. You know, you're seeing the Pentecostal movement, you're seeing their doctrines, what they stand for, and all those things. Uh, and it's just, it's a warning uh, to stay away from that movement. And hopefully people, when they come online and they look these people up, they'll check these out. And they'll listen about these Pentecostal people. And they won't get mixed up with them. Or they'll analyze it from the scriptures and leave that movement, right? Right? So that's what's important, that we see that, that we that they see, that people see that, and that they, they get the truth, all right? All right. Well, we're done here. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything like that over here on the side, but... You know, we're we're pretty much done. We had 82 on here today, which is good. 84. Good good day, good numbers. And praise the Lord for that. Lord willing, those old people will be blessed by that and 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 be able to have some defense against some of these false doctrines that are out there. And be able to see the truth. Let's see. Well, I don't see anything else on here. Nobody's saying anything, so I might just get out of here. And uh, I got some, I'm going to go do some running on the elliptical and get home and get ready for church tonight and just pray for us. We got a busy. Busy week coming up here, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, busy, 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 busy evangelism, very busy out there at the Minnesota State Fair, preaching the gospel out there, and uh, handing out gospel tracts out there and doing the work of the ministry, making full proof of our ministry, and uh, you pray for us that uh, the Lord would just bless us and, and keep us and uh, watch over us and, um, you know, take care of us. Yeah. Yeah, it really is crazy. Jesse Scruggs told me to go home. <laughs> uh, well, I I hope to get into some other things uh, when we're done getting through this. Are you going to do a broadcast on Friday? Yes, I believe so. Friday, I believe so. We'll be doing a, a broadcast and... Uh, for a few hours there on Friday. Uh, and then we'll be hitting the state fair and preaching out there and uh, asking the Lord to uh, bless the work that we do out there and, and to help us to do what he'd have us to do. Yep. Anyway, so God bless you all, and have a good night.